This video is brought to you by Magellan TV, the new documentary streaming membership service bringing you premium content, diving deep into history subjects you want to learn more about. Magellan TV has over 2,000 plus documentary movies, series, and exclusive playlists on history, which can be watched anywhere on your television, laptop, or mobile device. We highly recommend Battlefields of the World Wars. We particularly like the use of reenactments and reenactor groups to bring pivotal battles of both world wars to life. If you like analysis of vehicles, weapons, battlefields, and units, then you have to check this series out. The first 100 visitors to go to MagellanTV.com slash Simple History or click the link in the description below will get a one-month free membership trial. So head over there now. The Biscari Massacre, July 14, 1943, Sicily, World War II. The Biscari Massacre is one of the most known war crimes committed by Allied troops in World War II. It took place on July 14, 1943, during the invasion of Sicily. Two soldiers of the 180th Infantry Regiment, 45th Infantry Division, were held responsible for the murder of 71 Italians and two German prisoners of war. On July 10, 1943, troops of Lieutenant General Patton's 7th Army and troops from the British 8th Army under General Montgomery landed on the Italian island of Sicily. For soldiers of the 180th Infantry Regiment, this was the first engagement ever. This unit was formed out of National Guard units from Colorado, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Arizona. These men were the only Green Division participating in the invasion. Aware of their lack of combat experience, Lieutenant General Patton decided to give them a little spur. On July 9th, the day before the invasion, Patton held a speech in which he urged soldiers to be merciless. When we land against the enemy, don't forget to hit him and hit him hard. When we meet the enemy, we will kill him. We will show him no mercy. He has killed thousands of your comrades and he must die. If your company officers in leading your men against the enemy find him shooting at you, and when you get within 200 yards of him, he wishes to surrender. Oh no, that bat will die. You will kill him. Stick him between the third and fourth ribs. Lieutenant General Patton later stated that he wanted to turn these unskilled young boys into killing machines so that they could bear the difficulties of combat better. He probably had no idea what kind of problem his speech would later cause. Even though the first days of the invasion showed only weak resistance of Axis units, soldiers of the 180th Infantry Regiment performed poorly. It was obvious at that point that the campaign would be difficult for them and battle fatigue from constant combat was setting in. It was their misfortune that they were ordered to capture the Biscari Airport. It turned out that the mission would be complicated for the inexperienced unit. They suffered heavy casualties from the enemy's artillery, mortar, and sniper fire. The enemy snipers were especially effective from concealed positions. This fierce resistance frustrated the American soldiers so much that they took their anger out on those who surrendered. The first POW incident happened at the operational zone of the A Company. As the company was pushing towards the airport, they managed to capture 45 Italian and three German soldiers. Major Roger Denham from the 1st Battalion ordered Sergeant Horace T. West, 33 years old, to take these prisoners down the road where they would be held for questioning. The POWs had been told to take their shoes off in order to prevent them from escaping. Sergeant West obeyed the order and marched the prisoners in the company and a few other soldiers. After they went a mile down the road, Sergeant West set aside several prisoners and sent them to the intelligence officer. The rest he ordered to line up. He then took a Thompson submachine gun from one of his soldiers and sprayed all the prisoners with gunfire. After he emptied the entire magazine, he reloaded and shot lying down prisoners at point-blank range in the chest. 35 Italian and two German soldiers were killed. The following day, the chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel William E. King, discovered the bodies and reported it to his senior officers. The second incident took place on the other side of the airport three hours later. Over there, C Company was being torn apart by mortar fire and snipers. Once they managed to secure the position from which they were being sniped at, the American soldiers captured 35 to 40 Italian soldiers who had surrendered, some dressed in civilian clothing. An interpreter asked them if they were acting as snipers, but got no response. 
Company commander Captain John Compton, believing that they were responsible for the sniper fire, ordered his men to shoot them on the spot. Eleven of his soldiers obeyed the order and lined up the captured Italians. Some of the prisoners who realized what was going to happen started to run, at which moment the American soldiers opened fire. All of the Italian prisoners of war were killed. It didn't take long for Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, commander of the 2nd Corps to which the 180th Regiment belonged, to find out about both incidents. He reported it to Lieutenant General Patton, who dismissed the accusations as an exaggeration. He also suggested the whole thing to be covered up so it wouldn't disturb the press. Bradley, however, insisted on conducting the investigation and that both West and Compton should be tried for murder. Patton eventually gave in and both were arrested and put on trial. In the trial, both men pleaded not guilty since, as they stated, they were acting under Lieutenant General Patton's orders given during a speech before the invasion. However, such a defense was not applicable in both cases. Sergeant West was accused of executing prisoners of war who had already surrendered and that he did it in cold blood. It was pointed out that he had taken another magazine to shoot them again. For his crime, Sergeant West was sentenced to life imprisonment. His good service was the only thing that saved his life. The investigations ended abruptly in 1944 at the fear that the incident might have leaked to the U.S. public and the fear of repercussions on U.S. POWs in Axis hands. On the 23rd of November 1944, West was released from prison and reactivated to the rank of private. After the war, he was honorably discharged. Captain Compton, on the other hand, was acquitted and resigned to another unit. He was killed in action on November 8, 1943. The trial only dealt with two cases that totaled almost 80 victims. The exact number of those killed is unknown, as other incidents at Biscari were not brought to court. Both records of the trial were classified as secret and kept far from the eyes of the public for years.